Now y'all see how I'm living today? But I'm gonna take y'all back to how it first started. So one day, me and my left hand DT on the block, you feel me, chilling. I tell cuz, let's go hit the store and grab some woods and some gas. But who knew y'all? This one day would change my life forever. So we ended up pulling up to the BP down the street because it was the closest. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? We pull up, hop out. Walk in that thing, you feel me? Go grab our leaves and our gas. Now while we in there, this dude named Bear from Englewood families pull up. Now dog was somebody from his way who was getting that bag. But we was beefing heavy at this time. So as soon as he walk up in there and see us, me and DT get the set tripping on him like, what's cracking, cuz? You know you out of bounds. He like, listen. I ain't worried about y'all boys' blood. Y'all ain't got enough pipe to be for me. Y'all better cut it out and find y'all something safe to do. I ain't the one on family's gang, fool. I'm like, man, on 60 Crip, we ain't worried about y'all boys. But I'm gonna give you a pass since we in this gas station. And I ain't trying to crash out. So we going back and forth for a little second in that thing. And I walk out that thing, but I'm mean mugging cuz the whole time. You know what I'm saying? So we hop out. I go outside and pump my petrol. So when that fool bear walk out, he's staring at me and mugging like we soft or something. Man, I couldn't let this go, y'all. 60 Crip, I hopped out my whip and walked up on cuz while he was pumping this guy. And up the blower on him. He like on blood, you done lost your mind, nigga. I'm like, yeah, nigga. You thought this was sweet. And on 60 Crip, I'm gonna need you to run everything. That chain, them buffs, and any paper that you got in your pockets, fool, if you wanna live. He like, you making a big mistake, blood. I'm like, boy, you the only one that done made a mistake coming up here today. RSC, ruthless, scandalous, crafty, fool. You know what it is. Man, that fool gave up everything, y'all. And he had like 10 stacks on him. He like, this ain't over, blood, I promise. Man, y'all, I grabbed that bread so quick, and I told him. Don't move till I pull off. If you do, I'ma leave your brains all up on this concrete. You feel me? So I hop in my whip after that and yank off. And I threw cuz like five racks just for coming along on the mission. Y'all, I know that boy was sick. I got him like that. But little did I know, this was far from over, gang. That boy was out for revenge, y'all. So later on that night, he out sliding past our hood, you feel me? And he spot the homie DT outside Mayvern Liquor smoking a square. And that's all he needed, y'all. How could 
cuz wasn't on his P's and Q's and I ain't see dude walking up to him. That part will forever blow me. He get up on cuz and up blow her. Like, yeah, where your man's at, blood? Cuz, like, I ain't telling you nothing. You must ain't learned from earlier. Man, you up that blower, you better use it. I ain't telling you nothing, clown. Bear like, oh, I got you. I was gonna do that anyway. And hit cuz, I ain't telling you. When I hear the shots, you feel me? Being locked out of my own house kind of screws But I already know that's where Cuz was at. Man, I ran up there so quick, y'all. So when I get up there with Blower, you feel me? I see my man laid out. You already gone, y'all. Man, I was so hurt, y'all. I wanted to cry. But at the same time, I had a whole lot of murder on my mind. Whoever did this, DT, was gonna pay. So I get back like 30 minutes later, y'all. Man, 12 had that thing roped off. So a couple days later, you feel me? We on the block still trying to figure this out and slide for cuz. And I tell my bro Lamar, I'm like, hey, cuz, the streets talk, bro. Whoever did this can't hide forever. And that's when my Uncle G pull up on us. Oh, he hop out that thing and walk up on us, you feel me? He like, yeah, the street saying that fool bear from Englewood family's bragging about that body. Lamar like, now nah, we know for sure. We got a slide. I'm like, good looking, huh? We got this. That nigga ain't gonna make it another day. Lamar like, bro, we need to go holla at Big Stretch down the street and see what Cuz got for us. I tell him that don't sound like a bad idea, bro. So after Unk pull off, you feel me? I tell Lamar, let's go. We walk down the block. Now, Big Stretch, that's our cousin, baby daddy, and he an OG from the set. And he always keep blowers and cluck wheels. He like, so I heard y'all boys looking for a striker and some heat. I'm like, yeah, cuz, we found out who killed the homie DT. And that nigga gotta die tonight. If not, the hood gonna look real bad. And that was the homie. He like, I got y'all boys. And he tell Lamar to go look on the other side of the car.
when bro get over there, y'all, it's an AR and two clips on the ground. Bro come back with that thing. I get excited, y'all. I'm like, oh, yeah, this the one right here. Stretch, stretch like this on the house. He like, and if y'all get caught, y'all boys don't know me. Well, I tell him good luck and you feel me and we pull off. And we yank down the auntie crib. We just had to wait for the sun went down to make our move. Later on that night, y'all, it was time to get to work. I told Lamar, they say he stay on the edge of their hood. So I'm going to have you drive, bro, and I'm going to shoot. And let's ride out. So we camped out across the tracks, you feel me? Just waiting until we spot that full car. Man, I was in full murder mode, y'all. Wasn't nothing finna stop this hit. So after waiting for about 20, 30 minutes, y'all, we finally spotted that full car pulling up getting ready to go back to his spot I tell Mar there you go he like that we own it as soon as that fool yank up in his driveway y'all it was go time I had bro hit the little cut behind his spot Hop out that thing, y'all. Get up on that fence, you feel me? Hop that thing. Drop and roll. Hit the back of that full crib. He wasn't gonna see it coming. He in the car, chilling like it's sweet. And y'all, I pop free on that cut so cold, lit the whole car up. Left his head on the steering wheel. We yanked off, y'all. Now, while we yanking off, y'all, some of his homies get to talking crazy. We get to busting at them. Y'all can get it too. Man, y'all. It really felt good. We had finally got revenge for the homie, man. I thought everything was gonna be straight after that. So about a week later, y'all, we chilling in front of AT spot, you feel me? Cooling it, kicking the bobos, you know. Regular hood activities. I tell bro and them, I'm about to hit the store. Right across the street, y'all need anything? Everybody say they good. I'm like, alright. I get to walking over there by myself. Now when I come out the store, y'all, I see a cop car across the street. And that mug pull up in front of AT Crib stop and they turn the sirens on I'm looking at all this like what's going on 
and they walk up on me. They tell me I need to come with them because I'm a suspect in an active murder investigation. I tell them I'm like, murder? Now what is y'all talking about? And I ain't got nothing to say to y'all without having my lawyer present. Man, y'all ain't got nothing on me anyways. How wrong I was, y'all. See, I had forgot that I had a little pocket rocket on me. And they got that joint, y'all. After that, I knew it was over. Even if they ain't get me for the body, y'all, I was already a felon, so they was gonna get me for the blower. Man, y'all, I'm in the back of the cop car talking so crazy. I'm talking about cussing them out, y'all. And they going right back with me, just with, making me angrier, you feel me? Marsick, he knew it was all bad. He like, don't worry, baby, bro, you gonna be straight. Now, like I said, y'all. I knew they ain't had no evidence in that murder, except probably me arguing with dude in the gas station. But they definitely got your boy for that blower. That landed your boy in the joint for three years, y'all. Now the whole time I'm in that thing, I'm just thinking like, man, when I get out of here, it ain't about nothing but money. Just sitting there getting my physique right. Plotting on the come up. <laughs> After three years, y'all, your boy was finally back on the streets free. Man, I couldn't believe it. Man, that fresh air tasted so great. Hey, my man, man, I where couldn't you believe going? I was out y'all still. And the only thing on my mind was running up a meal. I ain't care what the cost was. I was gonna do it right this time in the streets. So when I pull up to the spot, you feel me? All my people out there waiting for me. It was good to see him. And Lamar like, what's up, baby bro? Welcome home. It's time to get to it. Me and Unc got a couple of dollars for you. And one of his connects finna pull up on us so you can score. I'm like, shit, bro, that's been the only thing on my mind for all these three years, man. I'm ready. So this nigga named Clay pull up on us in a red band truck, you feel me? Never met this dude before. But he looked it kind of fishy. I walk up on homie. I'm like, what's happening, man? Hey, what's I heard up? you got it. He like, what's going on? So you G-nephew, huh? I done heard a lot about you. You ready to get that bag, young nigga? I just gotta go grab it out my stash spot and I'm gonna bring it back to you. I'm like, hell yeah, homie. Honestly, I just need a couple of ounces to hold me down for right now. And then we can go from there on out. Well, after that, y'all, Brody pull off. He tell me he gonna be back in about 20, 30 minutes. So after we out there chilling for about 40 minutes, y'all, I just knew he wasn't coming back. Then a car with some blood in it rolled up on us and slid us, y'all. Only thing I could think, y'all, this was a motherfucking setup. Y'all know me, though. Active with that blower. Them skills still work. And I blew all they asses down. 
I don't know why he did that, y'all. I was trying to do right this time. But he set off that demon again, y'all. You know what they say, y'all. You beat your enemy, you gotta get to know him a little bit better. So I sent one of my finest things to go holler at the boy Clay, see what's up with him. You know, she's sitting up here with this clown. He just study running his mouth, telling her everything. He telling all the bloods when to come get me, how to hit me, how these hit streets, ain't nobody finna come out here and take money out his mouth and all this, yada, yada, yada. Now, I can't believe this dude. I don't even know, bro. Like, what you got against me? It's all good, though. So, yeah, you know, after she left from over there, you know what I do. I asked Shorty come pull up on the kid. Soon as she pulled up, I couldn't do nothing but laugh, y'all. I seen it on her face how irritated she was. Man, y'all should have seen her. She hopped out that car and started making a fuss about the whole thing. Don't ever have me go back around him, woo, 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 and all this. So yeah, we sitting there chopping it up. She telling me everything. How to hit him, when to hit him. How she gonna set the whole thing up for me. All I gotta do is be ready when she called me. So you know me. I'm just sitting there soaking it all up. Yeah, I got to put this dude in Blender, y'all. He don't even know I got some real nice setup for him. You think you gonna play with me? No. Street getting crazier every day, man. Should I just heard today? Blew my mind, y'all. So I guess some of the homies pull up to the BP on, uh, on Swanson, right? So when they pull up, they see dog in the car, right? But the nigga don't see them, though. Well, this dumbass nigga, he walk in the motherfucking gas station. Six so Niggas peeped the nigga walking in that motherfucker. So shit, he walking there trying to get his gas and shit, you know. The homie D nice hop off the car now. If you niggas don't know D nice, D nice, he a money get nigga out the hood, you know what I'm saying? Shooter. You know what I'm saying? But he'll give you good squabbles too. He ain't on that type of time. So the homie D nice pimp up up in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? He peeped the car, peeped the, you know, counter everything. He like, yeah, that's this nigga. Boom, cuz walk up in that bitch. Mm. Instantly, you know what's on, right? So shit. Cuz and a nigga Clay going back and forth for that motherfucker for at least a minute, you know what I'm saying? Cuz on his ass like you bitch ass nigga, you been slide, you been having a nigga slide through the hood trying to kill my nigga Frank and all this shit. Woo woo woo. The nigga Clay trying to play it all like, no bro, that ain't me, that ain't me. He like, no nigga, yeah, that is you, man. Keep fucking playing with me. So cuz get tired of it. Knock the nigga out. He was so cold. I'm talking about the nigga sleeping that bitch. You feel me? Cuz walk out that bitch 6 0. Like, shit, fuck that nigga. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Cuz walk back to his motherfucking hood. Shit, as soon as he get back to the motherfucking hood, he had to move the car and shit, cause that pump he was on with broke but shit. He get back to the car. You know what I'm saying? He hop in, he tell one of my homies to get out and pump that shit, you feel me? Boom, nigga Clay wake up in that bitch right. This bitch ass nigga woke up, ran for his motherfucking life out the gas station. You know what I'm talking about? Hopped in the motherfucking car like, what? Skirted the fuck off, y'all. <laughs> I'm talking about like a little bitch, though. So I guess the homies ain't even paying no attention to this shit because they just think the little scary ass nigga running. Man, this whole ass nigga run down the block to his homies in them crib crying like a little bitch and shit, man. Talk about how niggas jumped him. Ain't telling the motherfuckers game to one on one. So shit, you know what happened after that, man. These niggas slid back to the gas station on my niggas, cuz before my niggas could even get shot, so them fucking Everything down, six up. Shit, when I heard that, I told him, girl, it's time. 
ain't no more way. We got to do this tonight. So I have her pull up on me, you feel me? When she pull up, she hop out, look thick as hell. You feel me? Hop in with me. Shit, I'm 6-0. I tell her, hit dog up, you feel me? So she, you know, she hit the nigga up. Boom. Nigga pimp back. He like, shit, baby, what you doing tonight? I'm finna be posted up by the store with my niggas, man. Come pull up. Woo, woo, woo. Feel me? So, boom. She text that nigga back. She like, all right, say less. I'll be there. You know what it is. Can't wait to see you. Y'all know what time it is, though. We finna lay that motherfucker down tonight. Straight the fuck up. See, the nigga Clay thought he could keep pulling all these little hoe ass moves in the streets and wasn't nothing gonna happen. But no, anytime you play with me or mine, nigga, retaliation is a must. Just like that, y'all, the war was on. Them niggas came to hey, the top. Yo. I know we stay right back through they block right on that night. These niggas wanna play tit for tat. Me and my soldiers are all of that. So we slid right back through until they block up too. I fucked up, y'all. See what I didn't know? The OG nigga D from Families was the nigga Clay Uncle. Now this nigga was a real problem. Money maker. Hitter. This nigga had been putting niggas in the ground since the 90s. And he held a lot of power in a section. Yeah, I really opened up Pandora's box with this bullshit, y'all. And I'm just sitting on the block trying to come up with a plan. But you got Uncle G tearing up Lamar, talking about your brother that started a war. I ain't trying to hear that shit. That's my little cousin, aunt, but y'all will find out more about him soon. And this 60 crit, we ain't never back down from nothing and ain't finna start now. I'm gonna come up with a plan to get us from underneath this bullshit. We gonna win this war if that's the last thing we do. I got my soldiers and I know they got me. Uncle G was pissed about the money I had to borrow, y'all. And rightfully so. He said we wouldn't even be in this war if it wasn't for you. And I had to sit there and take it. 
because he was right. And I'm just sitting up here fucked up, y'all. I can't believe these motherfuckers hit me for all that work. I got to find a way to get back at these niggas. Look at these punk ass motherfuckers right here, y'all. These niggas got all my work. Look at all these bricks and pounds, man. They hit them a major lick. Look at this punk motherfucker. He's so happy he hit my shit up. I watch this shit, y'all. These motherfuckers took the money that they made from selling my dope and went linked up with the triads to buy weapons. They want a real war, and I ain't gonna lie. The Chinese, they had a lot of connections to get all the army-grade guns that the Bloods needed. Shit, I was in real trouble, y'all, and didn't even know it. I guess I gotta make some connections of my own now, because this motherfucker ain't playing. So my brother Mar owned his own dispensary in the hood, LD Organics, you feel me? Nice little joint. So one night, he leaving out of there, you know, he locking up. He got all the bread that he made for the day with him and shit. And they get in the car, you feel me? Go back to the crib. He ain't paying attention, so some clown ass nigga creep up on him out of nowhere, y'all. And up on him. He act like he finna get a nigga the money, but they get into a shootout. Fuck. What the fuck? The nigga was finna do my brother in, y'all, till some of the homies came and saved the day. They chased the nigga and got on his ass. This nigga got the fuck on, y'all. So motherfuckers hit me. They telling me your brother done got shot. I'm pissed off like a motherfucker, y'all. I can't believe this shit. So you know, I run and get in the motherfucking car and hurry up and drive to the motherfucking hospital, y'all. Cause this shit still had me blue. Like, I could have lost my brother to some bullshit out here, man. Now, I know we ain't on the best of terms, but family is family. You got to protect that shit at all costs. So I pull up to the hospital, y'all. Luckily, it was just a leg shot. This nigga looked pissed, y'all. I could tell. This nigga come limping to the car and shit. I'm just happy he alive, though. But this nigga come cussing me out, y'all. I'm like, damn, bro. I came to pick you up. He going in, y'all. So we pop off from the hospital, you feel me? Shoot back to the hood. I'm speeding back because I got to know exactly what the fuck went on. He telling me it's all your fault. You got out and started a war with these niggas. We was cool before you got out, man. I'm thinking in my head like we've been beefing with these niggas for years. 
but I'm letting him talk his shit, because like I said, I'm just happy he alive, man. But I got a plan up my sleeve. So some of the homies found the nigga who had did it for me. Had this nigga cornered, y'all. I asked the nigga who hired him. He tell me the nigga D from Families. Nigga tried to change his appearance and everything, man. He said the nigga gave him 10 racks to do it, y'all. I'm like, oh, okay. I'll up on him after I get that information. Blow his fucking brains out, y'all. I'm talking about catch shooting. This shit meant motherfucking war now. With everything that was going on out here, y'all, I knew I needed to make some connections on my own. So I hit the boy Z up. Hey, what's up? I told him I needed help and I ain't know who else to turn to. You in a bit, homie. He gave me a location and told me to pull up alone. Don't bring nobody else. He also said, I got some important people that I want you to meet. Don't embarrass me. Now, I ain't knowing what to expect, y'all, but I pull up because I ain't got no other options. When I pull up, it's like a Villa Ranch style crib, y'all. I'm like, damn, this motherfucker nice. I wonder who owned this. Don't come to this barrio for any fucking reason. When I get there, y'all, the boy Z there. You got Miguel Madrazo. And you got his pops, Martin Madrazo. Now, for y'all who don't know who Martin Madrazo is, he's a Mexican cartel boss, y'all. I'm talking about big time. Forbes net worth $12 billion. This was the real deal right here, y'all. I felt like I had struck gold. They had the lifestyle I wanted to live, y'all. Guards everywhere. I'm talking about their operation was tight. Luxury cars. Everywhere. Bricks and pounds everywhere, y'all. More dope than a nigga to know what to do with. Crates of money. I'm talking about crates, y'all. Millions on millions. And they had crates of guns for the war that we needed. I'm like, damn, the boy Z really looked out, man. I got to play this right, y'all. This could be it for me. So I'm chilling at the spot the other day, y'all. You feel me? And I happen to get a random text. And it's telling me, come to the old recycling plant by myself. Now, this sounds fishy to me, y'all. And I ain't knowing what to think of it. All I'm knowing, y'all, if this is set up, whoever think they finna get the boy, shit, they got another thing coming. So I know I hop in the car and drive over there because I want to see what's to this. When I pull up, I start to see what type of time it is, y'all. And sure enough, it's exactly who I think it is. It's Martin Madrazo, his son Miguel, and a couple of their bodyguards. But what had me blew, y'all, was it was like 50 bricks on the ground outside this truck. So I wanted to know what's to it. 
So the boy Martin, man, he telling me you made a great impression on our first meeting, man. And I got a job for you. I need you to get off all these bricks for me. And you got two weeks. And if you can do that, just know you got a great ally in us. So we going over logistics, everything, y'all. You feel me? I'm listening to the man because this big business right here, y'all. He telling me if I get anything off, I get to keep 20% of the money. Just bring him back the rest. I'm like, oh, yeah? Say no more. Understood. So y'all know what I do after that, y'all. Let me go pop this trunk for these boys. Finna load this up. I need all of that. Man, I couldn't believe I had 50 bricks, y'all. Man, I was so happy when I left that meeting, man. I ain't want to let him see me smiling. But how can you not smile after a cartel boss drop all that work on you? Oh, we was finna eat now, y'all. This was the type of big time money your boy needed to touch. These boys wanted a war. Y'all was finna have all the money for the war. So when I get back, y'all, I call a meeting and I tell all my soldiers, y'all ready for this? This the big time right here. We got two weeks to get all this work off. And if we prove ourselves, we in the big league. I hope you niggas ready for this. After getting all them bricks from the cartel, man, I had my projects booming, y'all. It was kind of set up like the Carter off New Jack City. Guards at every entrance. You came in and tried anything stupid, you definitely wasn't making it back out alive. Man, I had the fiends lined up down the block, y'all. It was beautiful. Now when the fiends came in to cop they work, they hollered at my boy right there. My boy right there. Or my boy right there. See when handling business out here, wasn't no hand to hand in front of me. But I oversaw the whole operation from the top. Man, y'all should have seen how fast that money was coming in though. It was like we was printing it. Now I ain't gonna lie. I done got some big paper before, but this was on a whole nother level. And I ain't gonna lie, y'all. Seeing all that paper put a big smile on your boy face. And I felt like I needed to celebrate. I even paid back Uncle G the bread that I borrowed from him to get back on. And I told him about being plugged in with Martin Madrazo. Now, his exact words to me was, nephew, don't mess this up. We do this right, we in the big times. And I assured him, it was all gas, no brakes. So I know y'all remember a couple episodes ago, I had shot the fool D truck up. Man, I know that fool was pissed, y'all. Because I definitely would have been. But if you want to play games with me, just know I'm the biggest game player out here. But what I did know, y'all... That fool had some real malicious up his sleeve for your boy. He took the play straight out of my book with this one, y'all. And I ain't gonna lie, even though I was pissed about the situation, I definitely had to respect him. Because you had to be real bold to pull something like this. The boy pulled up on my block by himself and firebombed my old school, y'all. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, he definitely better be glad I wasn't out there, y'all. I would have blew that damn Mercedes up. Then to add insult to injury, y'all, this fool starts shooting at the car. I'm like, damn, it ain't enough that you done blew the car up. You gonna shoot at it too? Yeah, y'all, this fool was mad disrespectful. 
I'm like, I know this boy done lost his marbles playing like that. When I finally got out there and seen it, y'all, I was so sick. I'm talking about heart hurt. I'm like, damn, look at my baby. She don't even look the same no more. And I ain't gonna lie, y'all. A nigga definitely had a lot of murder on his mind. But I had to find a different way to hurt him. I'm talking about something that was gonna hit him to the core. So word on the street was the fool D had a little female he was dealing with, right? But they also telling me fool be treating shorty like dirt. Being real cheap with her all types. So I guess Shorty asked Fool for some money the other day, you feel me? Guess what he do? Throw it on the ground and tell her to pick it up. I'm like, oh yeah, this fool real dirty. But I knew, y'all, that was definitely my way in. So I guess Shorty like, take me home. You doing too much. I don't even want to be out here no more. Man, Shorty better be lucky D didn't kill her. So it just so happened, y'all, a few days later, I'm sliding through the streets in a cat, right? You feel me? Just trying to see what's going on out here. Nothing too major. And I spot Shorty at the little shopping plaza on her phone. I'm like, oh, yeah, this it right here. So y'all know me. I pimp up on her. I'm fresh as hell. Got all my ice on. And I'm in that thing. She definitely going. So I hop out. I'm like, damn, baby, what's good? She like, I got a man. I'm like, baby, if you had a real man, he definitely wouldn't have you out here in this old Impala. I'm like, come fuck with your boy, man. I'm going to take real good care of you. Y'all know me real smooth talking. Now, I don't think she was feeling it at first, but I think Shorty took a second look at me, y'all. She seen the whip and she seen all the ice, and she probably was like, yeah, he ain't lying. So I tell Shorty, I'm like, come on, baby. Let me go take you shopping. Man, y'all know she bit for your boy. She couldn't turn down a chance to ride in the cat and get pampered all day. So after that, y'all, you know, we pull off. And you already know where I'm taking baby to sell the deal. Rodeo Drive. I mean, the fool that pulled some real foul stuff, y'all. So me spending money to get back at him, it definitely wasn't an option. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. That girl can definitely shop. I spent 10K on her that day. So later on that night, y'all, y'all know what I'm on. I'm finna take Shorty back to the spot and try to seal the deal. So we hop on, like, come on, baby. We take you in real quick. We can chill or something. She see me pull the gun off. She like, oh my God. I'm like, baby, this to protect me and you. She like, oh my God, you so gangsta. I love it. I'm like, I know, baby, I know. It's nothing. You dealing with a boss now. Man, I was sitting there in disbelief, y'all. Like, damn, it was this easy to get this fool girl to go? Yeah, I was definitely finna hurt his soul. And I was gonna have her help me set him up. She's sitting there dancing for me, y'all. I'm just cooking up a plan in my head. And y'all already know what was finna go down after that. Your boy don't play. After getting all them bricks off, y'all, your boy had made over $4.8 million. So now it was time to go back to the boy Martin and drop it all off. And I ain't gonna lie, y'all. 
I pulled up to his spot, hella geek. I couldn't wait for him to see all this money. I knew he was gonna be impressed. When I get out there, y'all, I take all the money out of my bag and lay it on a little pallet for me. All crispy blue hundreds. And I ain't gonna lie, I definitely knew the boy was impressed. He started clapping for me and everything. He talking about some, bravo, my friend. I knew it was good to do business with you. I am so happy that Z brought you to us. And as agreed upon, you have our full support in this war that you have going on in the streets. Yeah, all that was cool, y'all. But what your boy was worried about was my cut. But he's sitting there preaching to me, you know, and I'm listening. You know, you gotta do that, man. He was gonna keep a steady supply of work coming to me. And I wasn't trying to mess that up. So after that, y'all, your boy ended up with 974000 So it was only right after that to go and get me some land. Just like I said I was gonna do. So what I ended up doing, I ended up pulling to a little railer that Martin put me on. He said this chick knew how to clean up dirty money. And that was exactly what I needed. When I get in there, she like, so what you looking to spend? You know, she telling me all the price ranges, you know, in places that she got around the town. I'm sitting there thinking like, man, I don't care what it is, I just need something nice. But I tell her, I'm like, my budget is 300000 If you can find me something nice for 300000 I'll definitely give you the money today. So after that, y'all, he had me meet her at this little spot by the beach. Now I pull up there, y'all, and I ain't gonna lie, your boy was hella impressed. That thing was like four stories, y'all. I'm like, damn, just putting down 300 racks today and get me this? So we get in there and take the tour and all that, y'all. She like, so do you want it or not? He like, hell yeah, I want it. Now let's get the paperwork done. I'm gonna bring you the money right now. After that, y'all, I had to pull up on my cousin aunt and slide an idea by him. Now, Martin ain't know about this idea, y'all, and I wanted to keep him out of it just for right now. But your boy had plans on his mind, big plans. I'm talking about expansion. Now, aunt was a little irritated when he got in the car. But I already knew once he heard what the boy had on his mind, all that was going to cease to exist. So I take answer to this little spot I had been scoping out, y'all. Prime real estate, if you know what I mean. Nice little low-key spot. When I get back there, I tell him, cuz, I called you out here today because your boy thinking about expanding out here into the south side of Lagos hood, and I need to put somebody on point out here. And hopefully it can be you. But you got to do right, man. I'm taking a chance with you right here, so hopefully you don't embarrass me. And cuz telling me, like, man, cuz, I appreciate that, man. I can handle it. I promise I'm going to make you proud, man. Anything going on over here? We stepping on them. I promise you, we're going to be the only ones making money over here after a minute. I'm like, say less. So I knew I made the right choice when I heard that. Just as I'm preparing to make my move on that full DR, a monkey wrench get thrown in the pot. Now I bet y'all wondering, what the hell is we doing at the pen? And I bet y'all also wondering, who the hell is this little dude right here with the dreads? Well, I'm about to tell y'all, gang. See that little dude right there? That's the boy D son, Lil Joe Hun from Families.
Now, I was locked up with the boy the last couple months of my stint, you feel me? But I ain't know who he was, you feel me? I just used to be out there getting my workout on. But little dude will always be staring at me every day while I'm getting my workout on. I just thought he was weird. So I guess today today, the boy get out. On these, he hop in the car. I know the boy D put him on game about everything. About his cousin Clay getting killed. About what's been going on out here between Rolling 60s and Inglewood families. All that. Now, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. The boy D a whole ass nigga to me. But he definitely a good pops. Man, this son welcome home, get for some shit that anybody will want. He dropped the son a 2023 Tahoe on them things, y'all. All red. And gave that boy $300,000 in cash. And told him, you back in the game now, son. This our city. And we got to get rid of that boy Frank and all his people. I don't care what it take, and I know you the man for the job. That little nigga was bad, y'all. Real bad news from what I'm hearing now. This right here, y'all, this the situation that put the boy in the pen in the first place. So I guess one night the boy was just out lurking, up to no good, you feel me? He spotted one of the homies at the gas station. tried to walk up on the homie and g-checking you feel me but the homie ain't taking him serious like little nigga get on my face bad move y'all as soon as the homie did that that boy upped and blew the homie dome off y'all i ain't care about cameras or nothing so when the police went to visit the gas station after that situation y'all they talked to the gas station owner and he said he seen everything that happened in front of there. He had security footage and he'd be willing to show up in court and testify. I don't know why he did that, y'all. No one 12 can't protect you after they leave. And you know word travel fast in them streets, y'all. So once that boy D heard that, y'all already know what he did. He went to pay him a visit. Crony's mob up in that thing, and he like, I heard you said you seen something, and I think you need to forget all of that. If not, we gonna make life real hard for you out here. Oh, and don't make us come by your house and see your wife and your pretty little daughter. And I think you need to disappear into this trial over, man, if you know what's best for you. Now, he might have been a civilian, y'all, but that boy was definitely not stupid. He did not want to lose his life. When the court day finally came, y'all, that boy D was confident that they was going to win. That's the homie mama right there, y'all. Sad situation. But without that gas station owner showing up to be the witness, or without them security tapes, the prosecution's whole case fell apart, y'all. They looked real stupid in front of the judge. So the judge had to dismiss the case, y'all, without prejudice. Yeah, y'all, like I said, 
this little nigga was definitely bad news. That wasn't the first time that he did some bullshit to the homies, y'all. They say another thing he did was pull up in the middle of the hood by himself and pop a couple of the homies down. Now, you definitely got to be a bold nigga to come in the heart of our hood and pull a stunt like this. But that boy did not give a fuck, y'all. Yeah, this was bad news all around, y'all. I had to figure out a way to take one of these boys out. It couldn't be both of them on the streets. The boy D was still gonna have to die, y'all.